Welcome everybody uh, to my talk today about developing your own Swift middleware. My name is Christian Schwede. I'm a software developer working at Innovance. And I'm mostly working on Swift and testing and automation. Personally, I started using Swift uh, at the end of 2012. And at that time point, I was evaluating different object storage solutions for my former company. And one of these solutions was OpenStack Swift. And I was very happy with OpenStack Swift because of the flexibility of Swift itself. But unfortunately, one key feature was missing that we needed, and that was quota support at the end of 2012. So I started talking to the community and uh, different people from them. And finally, I created my own Swift middleware to add account quota support for Swift. And finally, in March 2013, um, this account quota patch got merged within Swift and was released with a Grizzly release. So I want to talk to you about how to use middlewares to extend the Swift functionality. And because Swift is using the web standard gateway interface and uh, several other packages like paste.deploy, I also want to introduce you to these packages. We will continue with developing our own Swift middleware for the Swift proxy server. And of course, have a look uh, into testing and packaging your middleware. And finally, I want to conclude my talk with some references for you. So why do we want to write some Swift mil middlewares? Actually, if you look into the Swift proxy server configuration file, you will see and notice that most of the features are already implemented as a middleware. For example, we have stuff like logging, temporary URLs, form post, dynamic large objects, authentication middlewares, and quota middlewares. And these middlewares give you a great flexibility to extend your currently existing functionality. And another great benefit of using middlewares is if you want to add a functionality, you don't need to fork the Swift code and to modify the existing Swift code. You can just use the existing Swift code, your upstream release, for example, create your own, develop your own middleware, and use both at the same time. And several people already have done this. So there are existing third-party middlewares outside of Swift, for example, for authentication and um, adding additional API layers. And there are also some companies that created their own middlewares for their own private use. So they are not released to the public, but um, to extend functionalities these companies needed. So let's first have a look, in general, how is the web standard gateway interface working and what's it all about middlewares. The web standard gateway interface is a simple interface between web servers and web applications. And it was defined as a Python enhancement proposal, triple three, and also updated for Python 3.3 lately. And this web standard gateway interface defines an, defines an application and a server. The application simply has a callable object that has a call method, and the server invokes this callable for each client request. So the client sends a request to the server, and the server simply calls your application. These application objects must accept two positional arguments. And the first one is a Python dictionary called environ, and the second one is a callable called start response. The start response callable itself takes two arguments. One is status, for example, a 200 OK or a 400 4 not found. And the second one is a list of tuples, and these are the headers that are sent back to the client. For example, content type, text plane, or whatever you have. The environment dictionary has some useful informations that are required to write some useful middlewares. The first one is a request method. For example, you have a put or a get, post, delete, copy, and options. The second one is uh, the actual pass that is sent to the whiskey server. For example, in, in the case of Swift, this contains your account name, your container name, and your object name. We have also something like a query string. So for example, you can send a question mark and then a parameter name and a value to this web standard gateway interface. And this is also included in your dictionary. 
If you send some headers to the server, these headers are also included in the environment, and they are prefixed with, with an HTTP underscore. And finally, you have a file-like object called whiskey.input, and this file-like object, you can read from it, and it um, contains the data that was sent to your server. So let's have a look at a simple sample server. Everything you need for this to run this is included in Python itself, so you don't need to install any additional packages or modules or whatever. And what we're doing here is simply starting a server on the local host, port 8000, in the lines uh, on the bottom of the page of the slide. And this server calls the application defined above. And the application itself takes the environment I already told you and the start response as arguments. And what it does here is that it returns the body. And inside this body, we return an element from our dictionary. In that case, it's a pass info. It's just an example, but it works really nice and gives you an idea how this everything works. So, but it's not very useful. If we want to extend it a little bit, we might either need to modify that code or we can add a middleware to this. So what is a middleware? A middleware um, can act both as a server and as an application. So the server is calling the middleware. So from the middleware perspective, it's just, calling, it's just getting the request from the server. But the middleware itself is also calling an application so it, it acts as a server for this application. And by doing so, you can run multiple applications side by side. You're not limited to one middleware or two or five. You can, well, I don't know, but you can run a lot of middleware side by side. And this is very useful because you can add stuff like authentication or you can do reroute requests or do some content processing. And if you look uh, at the um, bottom line, we have a client that sends still the request to the server, and now the server calls the middleware and the application. Inside the Swift proxy con server configuration file, you will finally see a line called pipeline, and this is something like that. Imagine it's, it's a pipeline. One middleware calls the next middleware, and finally we call an application, and that application, in case of Swift, is a proxy server. So let's have a look at a uh, small example. On the bottom part of the screen, you see just, I uh, just started a Python uh, session and called my application. And on the upper part, you see I have a curl request prepared. I want to set to my local server listening here. And I added some parameters also. For example, we have a pass in for ABC. We have a query string called hello. And we send some custom header. So what now happens if I send this? I modified the application a little bit, it will return our data. So this is some part of the dictionary, of the environment dictionary that the server is responding to the client. Sorry. So if we want to extend our application, we need a middleware. So how does the middleware look like? The middleware itself is a class, and this class has some callable, and within this callable, we have our actual code that is ex executed. And if we start our server, it no longer takes the application as an argument, but the middleware, and the middleware calls our application. And in case of Swift, this would be the proxy server itself. So what's happening here? Inside our call method, we first start with a response. We prepare the response here. And then we try to find or to identify the pass info. And if the pass info equals to echo, something will now happen. And in this case, we simply read the data that was sent from the client to the middleware and to the server and respond to it. So we have something like an echo. So coming back to the example from before, if I now send, a, sorry, a different response, you see that the server is now returning a different response. I send the data hello world to the server and it responds also with a hello world because of the pass and this was intercepted by the middleware and no longer the uh, application itself.
So one drawback here is that if you are adding more and more middlewares, you have a really long line, finally, in your make server call, because each middleware needs to call the next middleware. And we have stuff like the server name inside it. We have the port name, as a, yeah, the port number inside it. So you have a lot of configuration stuff in your Python code. And you don't want this. You want to have a separate configuration file. We also want to have some testing, of course, for our middleware, hopefully. And we need a well, better way to deploy the middleware on the server. So let's have a look into this. Actually, testing middleware is quite easy. If you think about it for a moment, the middleware takes an application. And if I send a request to the middleware, I expect something from the middleware. So what do we need to do? We are using a Python unit test for this. And um, if you look at the uh, lines below, we prepare our middleware. And instead of using a real application as an argument, we just use a fake application. And you see this a lot, uh, for example, inside the Swift tests also. So in this fake, fake application just returns with, a, for example, 200 OK. We don't test that one here, but we want to simply test that the middleware is working. So we prepare a request, and in this case, a put request. So we need an environment dictionary for this. We need, of course, some body that we want to send to the middleware. And this is also defined there, hello world. And we want to send it to slack, slash echo as a pass. So in the second last line there below, we should try to get the response back from our middleware. And finally, we compare this to the data that we have sent to the middleware before. Now, if you want to deploy your middleware, and especially in case of Swift, um, you don't want to ship well, single files, and you don't want to have the configuration codes inside your files, so there's a very nice package called paste.deploy. And paste.deploy loads Whiskey applications and servers from a uniform resource identifier that might be, for example, a Python egg. And paste.deploy uses an ini style configuration file. And uh, it makes it very nice because now you can you separate your code from your configuration. There's also a script included, paste script. And paste script can serve your application directly from your configuration file. So you don't need to write any init files if you don't want to, and simply can use your configuration file for this. And paste.deploy is also widely used in OpenStack itself, not only in Swift, but also, I think, in Nova, Keystone, Glance, and I would assume a lot, many more projects. So, an example configuration file looks like this. We define our application itself, first two lines. We define our middleware. In this case, it's only a single middleware. And what we now do is we define also a pipeline. And this pipeline has every middleware that we want to use in it, and finally, our application. And last, we define the server part. And in this case, it should listen on port 8000. What I also did here is, uh, if you look at the filter middleware part, I have something like a suffix equals echo response. So I can add some configuration options to these configuration files that are used inside the middleware. So I need to modify my middleware, middleware a little bit, but not that much, and can use any configuration option that I add here inside my middleware. Now, how does Python know that um, we have an egg, for example, like sample, and that there's a middleware included? We need a setup script for this. And the most important part in this case are the two entry points here. We have two entry points, one for the application itself, and the other one for the middleware. And if you look into Swift, we have also a lot of entry points there for each of the middleware, for example. And if you want to write your own middleware, you need to have something similar. You don't need an app factory for Swift if you want to write a Swift middleware. But um, if you want to write a middleware outside of Swift, you need something like that. So and what Paste Deploy does, um, it makes it very, the behavior now it's changes a little bit. And OK. So 
now I can simply start um, a server with a configuration file like this, and it's now listening on, on port 8000. And the behavior is equal to the previous behavior from the previous example. But if we look at the configuration file itself, there's some parts. The first part, exe command equals serve and daemon like true. We also have the ability to start this process as a daemon in the background. And as I told you also, you can use the paste script itself to serve directly from the configuration file. So I can just call the configuration file, execute a start, and now we have a listening daemon in the background, which is really nice and useful because you can write very fast some small applications. And of course, you have your usual stuff like uh, status and of course also stop. Now, we are here to write something like a Swift middleware and not a uh, basic whiskey application. So let's have a look at what we do want to do here. And for this talk, uh, I was thinking about a small preview middleware that is useful, for example, if you want to write, I don't know, maybe the, your next image sharing service or something like that. So what we want to do here now is for every put, and the put is in that case an image that I sent to the Swift proxy, I want to create a small preview image and store it separate from the original object. If I execute a get request and append a query string preview, I don't want to get back the original object, but only the small preview object. And finally, because I'm now storing two objects, I also want to also want to ensure that the preview image is also deleted if I delete the original object. There are a few helpers and useful tools that we are going to use inside this middleware. One is called split pass, and split pass takes the part of your URL and returns your version, your API version, your account name, container name, and object name. And you can modify the, or you can add some arguments to split pass to ensure that split pass returns or raises an exception in case, for example, you have no object name. Well, it doesn't make a lot of sense for our middleware uh, if we want to create a preview image if there's only a request on a container level or account level. So we want to exit in that case early and continue within the proxy server. And because we need to store our preview image, we need to execute a request within the proxy server itself. We need to do a, a sub-request. And to make this working, you need to add this middleware after your authentication middleware, because otherwise it won't work. And finally, there is a very nice uh, decorator, Whiskify. And what Whiskify does, it simplifies a lot of stuff for you. And if you remember, before we had our call method with an environment and a start response, and if we add this dec decorator to it, we only take a request as an argument. And here, this request has some attributes, for example, the query path information, or your method, environment, and your body, where you can read from. And finally, in your middleware, you just need to return yourself app, that is the next application or the next middleware from your pipeline. So let's have a look what happens in real in our middleware. So we first start and try to get the account name, the object name, and the container name. And in case that we don't have an object name, we immediately want to return. So what I already said, we need to modify the split pass arguments. And if you do like I've done here, it will raise an exception if there's no object name found in your pass. So, and in that case, I, I exit my middleware here, and the next middleware in the pipeline will take over. So, but let's assume I have an object name. And I want to store my preview image in a container that has a different suffix. So, for example, if my container, my original container number was test, I now want to store the preview image in test underscore previews. So, for a GET request, and a GET request that has a parameter um, preview appended, I want to modify the pass and the, yeah, the URL pass that will be served by the Swift proxy server. 
So I no longer use the original pass, I now use my preview pass. Of course, to do so, I need my preview. And I simplified the code a little bit. Um, this method called create preview is an uh, external one in that case. Uh, I will give you the code later on uh, so you can have a look into this. It's simply a Python imaging um, call that just creates a smaller image. But let's assume we were able to create this image and this preview. So what now happens is we call a sub request. And the sub request itself takes the current environment from our request, the new preview pass, where I want to store my preview, and a new body, the preview itself. And then to execute the request, I just need to call get response. So in a case I want to delete my object, I also want to delete my preview object. So in that case, I only need to modify and to execute another sub request. In this case, uh, also with a modified preview or with a modified pass. So in that case, we, are, we delete both objects at the same time. This request will silently fail if there's no preview object. So it will just continue to work. You don't get an exception or something like that in your proxy server. Now let's have a look how this looks like in real. I have a small, swift, all-in-one virtual machine running here. Currently, there are only two containers. One container is called test, and the other one is called test preview, and both are empty. If I now upload um, a small image into the test container, this is like your normal behavior that you were expecting from your Swift, proxy, uh, from your Swift cluster. But now let's have a look into the test container, test preview container. There's a small object, and the first number there is the number of bytes. And if I compare this one with the original object that is stored in the other container, it's much smaller. It's my preview. So these containers are both public, so I can just um, request uh, from anywhere. And if I do that from a browser, I get a small preview image, which is nice. And in this case here, I appended the query path um, to the URL. So if I remove that part, like this, I will get my original object back. So I, have, I don't need to remember where are my preview objects stored. Of course, you, don't are, you are not fixed to this. You can, well, you can think of a lot of different ways how to handle this. It's just an example. So I already said that there are existing middlewares and third-party middlewares outside of Swift that, adding, that are adding functionalities to Swift itself. This is a small list of what well, I would say the most popular middlewares that are existing. We have Swift OS. Swift OS is a middleware that stores all the data that you need for an authentication system inside Swift itself. So you don't need a database or a directory service. We have Swift 3 that uh, is adding a S3 compatible API to Swift. We have the CDMI middleware. The CDMI middleware, uh, CDMI is a cloud data management interface, and some applications are using that. It's a different API and protocol, and by using this middleware, you can use a CDMI-like interface also in Swift. We have Swift Informant. Swift Informant sends um, statistic data to a, to a StatsD server. So you can collect your requests and do some processing on, on this uh, stati statistic data. And if you want to use uh, Swift together with a content delivery network, we have the Swift origin server that you can use for that. And for example, there's another project, Silometer. Uh, I think everybody heard about it already. And Silometer itself is also using a Swift middleware to collect the data that it needs to pro process billing and whatever you need. And it's uh, included in the Silometer project itself. Now, if you want to have a deeper look into what I've shown you to before, my examples, I prepared a small um, Git repository 
And it's available on our GitHub account, Enervance GitHub account. And there's a step-by-step -step guide. I will start with a simple sample whiskey application, adding more and more functionality, and finally, you have this preview middleware that I've shown you, um, complete with all of the tests. So you can just uh, have a look at the code and what I've, what I've done there. And yeah, it's a step-by-step -step guide, basically. There are some other existing documentation available um, within Swift Self. So we have a great overview about existing middlewares and all the options these middleware take. There is a guide how to develop your own middleware, um, which, is, uh, which also has an example. If you want to develop your own authentication middleware, you need to be a little bit carefully and you should strictly follow that guide also. And finally, if you wrote a middleware that is useful to other developers and operators, um, it would be nice to just submit a patch to Garrett and add your project and your middleware to our associated projects. And if you want to look a little bit deeper into Whiskey and the Web Standard Gateway interface and middlewares in general, have a look at the Python documentation um, on the link below. So I'm done with my talk. Uh, thank you very much for attending. And if you have any questions, just let me know now uh, or just write me an email or come to our booth and ask me there. Thank you very much. No questions? Okay. Thanks.